Hi everyone, in this video we'll see how to calculate every option Greek using Python and in particular we'll do this under the Black and Scholes model. So first of all we rename our Jupyter Notebook file for instance as option Greek. Okay, now the first thing to do is to download the, the stock data so we need to import first some, some libraries so numpy as mp as usual then from date time we import both date time and time delta then we'll see later how to use this then we import the yahoo finance package yahoo uh, yahoo finance is the package we will use to retrieve all the data and uh, we call it yf and finally to, to plot the, the data and the volatility we'll compute we we download the matplot library dot pyplot as plt okay now we can compute our volatility first we download our data so we choose a stock name for instance in this video we consider the s p 500 uh, is which ticker is spy then the end date we select is uh, today so from date time we have just imported there is the function today then we, we choose the number of years, in this case we can just consider one year, and the start date is computing according to the end date going back in time of n years. So we do end date, which is today, minus the time delta, and since we, we, we need to give as input the number of days, we can pick number of years time 365. So we can we have the start date which is one year ago. Then we download the data. So stock data is yf dot download of the tickers is simply the stock name spy. Then we have the start which is the start date. Okay, and uh, the end which is the end date. And uh, okay. I can just show you what is uh, the stock data variable. Okay, there is a typo here, download. Okay, this is the, the all the data frame. So we pick just the adjusted close price. So we create stock price. Uh, stock price is equal to stock data of the, the label adjust close. Okay, so we have just saved all our stock prices. Then we compute the, the log returns. So log returns, which is simply the logarithm of the prices of the day after over the the, step, the stock price of the, the day before. So from NumPy, we choose the, the logarithm function. Then we have stock prices over stock prices shifted of one day so shift of one and then we drop just to just to visualize better the and did not uh, the unaccessible values okay now we can compute the volatility so first we create these two variables which are the trading days in a year which are on average 252 and then we do the same with the trading days in a month, which on average are 21. Okay, now the volatility of our SPY stock is just our log returns. We choose a rolling window of the trading days in a month. And we apply the standard deviation to, to this vector and we multiply it by the square root of the trading days in a year. So the square root of 252. Okay, now we can print the table we obtain with the volatility. And as you can see, we have these values, but it's in, in to visualize that better, this data, we can uh, uh, plot, uh, we can, in the same figure, we can plot both the SPY stock price and the volatility. So we, in 
initialize our variable figure and x as plt dot subplots so we have two 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 plots in the same figure so first one is the stock prices and for instance we can choose the color red here in the typo color red okay then we set the x label so set x label which represent the date and for instance we can choose the font size of 14 which is a good choice then we set the y label which in this case is the stock price again we have to choose the same color because this is what we are going to represent and for instance again we can choose a font size of 14 then we have we copy and paste this but before we need to to do this function so ax dot twinks because we want to use this is because we want to use the same plot with to 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 figure both the stock price and the volatility okay now we can uh, paste what we just copied so ix2 dot first we have ax2 dot plot and then we have the volatility and this time we can use for instance the color blue okay and now we the x label remains the same so we can drop this and the y label in this case is the volatility okay again the color must be the same of the data so blue and then font size is good and then we can show our plot let's see if, if we've done some mistakes okay ax dot plot okay just because i initialized the wrong name okay you can see both the um, okay i think there is a mistake here okay here is ax2 okay so you can see the stock price in red which is from uh, around the 450 us dollars up to 380 and then on the uh, with the blue color the, the volatility starting from 0 0.15 so 15 percent up to 20 percent of as of today again uh, I, I just re just remember we use a rolling window of a month so basically until you have a month of data you you don't you don't see the volatility plot because you need a month of data just to to have the first value so that's the reason we we start a month later we have a delay of one month with respect to the stock prices okay now we can uh, pass to to the next part which is first we compute the the black and show score price so i just want here to to be clear black and shows option price because yeah we, i think we will we'll choose the cold price but it's the very same with the put one we just need to modify to modify a flag so we need to download uh, a part of the library so from pi volib volatility library dot black shows we need to import black shows as bs for instance and okay now we can choose our option parameters option parameters as for instance first we have the risk free rate which can be for instance five percent so 0 0.05 then the underlying price of as of today so as zero we choose the last element of the stock prices vector so stock prices of minus one so which represent the final value then we have the the strike price we can choose an at the money option at the money call so we can choose the strike price equal to the 
underlying price of today that the maturity can be one year for instance and finally the volatility is the very same uh, of the stock prices so we pick the last uh, the last element of the volatility vector then this is what i meant before here we have the the type of option which must be c or p and which is c to to identify the the call option and then we we can write for instance option price and then we compute on the fly the the black and short price so we have first the type which is the call then we have the underlying price the strike price the maturity the risk free rate and finally the volatility and as you can see with all these parameters the option price with considering the, the s p 500 as underlined is around 40 dollars okay now we can arrive at the, the main part of the video which are the option rigs under of course the black and shows model okay first as uh, as per the, the the price we need to import the necessary library so again form pi underscore volatility library dot black and shoals this time dot greeks dot analytical so we, we want the analytical formulas to be used we need to import all the necessary greeks so the delta then we have the gamma the vega the theta and finally the rho and uh, we import this okay there is uh, a typo so pi underscore valid dot ah, okay here it's one sorry okay so uh, just to be clear uh, it's not the the main goal of this video is not to explain uh, what these Greeks represent and how are they computing analytical with the formula but it's just to to give you an idea of how to to compute them using Python so first one we have the Delta which represent the first derivative with respect to the underlying price and we can compute it Delta option equal to Delta and as input we have the type which is again the cool then as zero then the stock price the maturity, the risk free rate, and finally the volatility. We will visualize them all together at the end of the of this. Um, the delta is just just a couple of words. is very useful in the is very important in trading world, not just in a, in a theoretical way, but also in a practical way. And in, in the next video, we see how to properly delta edge your stock portfolio so i will update on how to use this this value then we have the gamma okay there it is it's not important then we have the gamma option the gamma of the option which is the second derivative with respect to the underlying price but we can copy this and instead we can write here use the function gamma the inputs are all the same so I can copy and paste all of them okay then we have the vega which is the first uh, derivative with respect to the volatility of the underlying so vega option is the function vega then we have the row which is the first derivative with respect to the risk free rate this time so row option is row and all the option parameters and finally the last but not least the the theta which is the first derivative with respect to the uh, the maturity so theta option is equal to theta and all the option parameters again okay seems no mistakes and now we can print all of them so we can print option bricks okay now we print all of them so first we have the delta and we just need three uh, three digits after the comma so delta option comma three okay now we copy and paste these for all the 
the Greeks. Then we have the Gamma. Then we have the Vega. Then we have the Rho. And finally, the Theta. Okay, we just need to modify this part. Gamma option, then we have the Vega option, then we have the Rho of the option, and finally the Theta. And let's see, as you can see in this very short and common table in certain words, we can see all our option groups. And we just computed, uh, I re just remember, on the S&P 500 stock. And uh, yeah, that's it. That This is the, the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this one. And as, as I said before, the next video will be on how to properly delta edge your stock portfolio. So thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.